from the Berlin Fire Department. You guys can find on up. Um, Joe has sent me the proposed budget which should be in front of you. And usually what they do is they go down and give the highlights and yeah. things like that. Okay. So uh, Chief Dufresne sends his apologies. He got called into work with a building emergency at about 4 o'clock. He doesn't think he'll be able to make it tonight. So instead, I uh, introduce myself and Deputy Chief Keith Reinerstein, for those that don't know me. And uh, I think everybody knows Jerry. So we've been working since October or so on this budget and have uh, completed it, passed it last night at our. Uh, business meeting. The highlights are, uh, let's see, communications is up on our expenditures. The primary reason for the communications being up is that section includes our dispatch with Capital West Montpelier Police Department. They have an across the board to every department increase of 9% to their dispatching fees for this next coming year. So that brought us from 43.5 up to 47,000 um, for what we have to pay to them. We also increased our purchase of radio equipment, another $2,000 to $5,000 uh, for our aging equipment there. Um, the line that we started last year when the, when the budget committee was working, we had talked about getting a contingency fund last year for unexpected expenditures such as if one of the trucks decides the pump wants to go south on us, that would be you know, $30,000, dollars $50,000 repair right there. So we're starting up a contingency fund this year. We're funding it with uh, $5,000 to start with. We have $8,000 in CDs that is already basically our contingency fund, so it's gonna make 13,000 for this next year. We are offsetting that by increasing the previous budget surplus from what we didn't spend in previous years to 20,000 instead of 15,000. So that levels that out. Overall, the total expenditures is 331400 From the current year, which is the expenditures of 315350 it's an overall 4.8% increase. The department itself is going from uh, Department <coughs> portion income of sixty thousand five hundred and thirty two in this current year to overall sixty three thousand four hundred and thirty two. Um, what it's that effectively means is the increase to the town portion is four point nine percent instead of four point eight percent. I'm probably looking at it, but I don't see the total amount to the town. The total amount to the town. Yeah, last year it was 254818. Yep. And uh -huh. this year it's 267968. Town and County. I see. Okay. That's what that means. Okay. So I'm I'm Jerry Diamantides and I am the town representative on the board. Have been now for two years, I think. Um if I may, a couple of comments on this on the budget. Uh, one is going back to last year. Uh, we spent half the year with a budget committee developing the budget that's the precursor to this, um, and this is a continuation of that previous year's budget 
process, if you will. It didn't take quite as long this year um, because we spent so much effort uh, redesigning it last year. Um, but there, there are a couple of things I'd, I'd like to point out. Operationally, day to day, it's an extremely lean budget. I mean, the, the, the equipment is well worn and the, I, I want to make sure that you understand that the folks at the fire department really recognize that this isn't their money and, and they do a really good job operationally running the fire department from a fiscal perspective, I believe. Uh, but there are two things that I, I want to point out and they're at the bottom of the expenditures. 20000 for capital replacement and 5000 for contingency. The capital replacement, basically the capital that we're looking at replacing is a truck. At some point, uh, it's, it's going to come to pass in the not too distant future. Some folks say two years, some folks say five years, maybe it's six, maybe it's three. One of those trucks is going to need to be replaced. The, the one truck is 1989. Our Two primary response engines is a 1993, which we bought new, and a 1989, which we bought used. Which have been maintained extremely well all, all, this, all this time. But should it come to pass that one of those trucks needs to be replaced, it, it depends on how you do it. It could be $300,000. It could be $500,000. It's not going to be $100,000. So we've started in the past couple of years to identify this capital replacement fund. Now, we're only putting $20,000 into it. And I would, I would make the case here that that might not be enough. Because at some point, there's going to be a quarter of a million dollar need. Now, it's not going to happen where you need it the same day. But it's, it, it's going to have to get made up in, in, a, in, in short order. And it, it may be prudent to put more money into this fund than we've allocated in this budget. And I just want to bring that to the board's attention so that as you, as you evaluate what you're looking at here, that this, this may be a little bit short-sighted on, on funding the capital replacement uh, fund that we have. How much is in that? Is available we for that? We currently account? have ninety thousand in it, okay. and um, an engine. I was just looking in this past week, uh, a brand new engine, which is the way we use engines. We should get a new one instead of a used one, and a brand new engine for the style and type that we use is around four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The uh, in your expenditures loans is that interest is that what what are the loans? The loans are was it three years ago now we purchased a brand new suite of the breathing apparatus the air packs and we financed <coughs> it at the credit union across the street and that is only the repayment of that loan that's the annual cost. So that's principal and interest. Yes. Yes. <coughs> How much longer on that? You would have to ask me that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I was just thinking about that the other day, and I believe it's three or four more years anyway. Just thinking out loud of when that time comes, that should be added to the capital reserve. That was our thoughts. Yeah. Did we ever talk about the bond? Because there's been some huge numbers floated past us in other years, mm -hmm. bigger than what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. like a oh, it can be big, yeah. yeah. And I thought we we had talked about a bond of some sort if that ever came up. Is that just me remembering it wrong? Or? No, I think we'd have to figure something out. Right. I mean, yes. I mean, you can't go without a fire truck. It's kind of right. hard to, I think, fight a right. fire without one. Um, and I think we're doing the same thing, trying to save money to our equipment. And we're in the same boat. We don't have enough money saved, um, but we're, we all got it. I mean, well, it's a little bit of that pay me now or pay me later. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure which is more efficient. 
if you float a bond for the whole thing and hammer it down with bigger payments because you've already made the purchase, or you squirrel a little away because maybe someday, maybe we're going to need this money. And then, you know, it's half of what you need, and now you've got a little of both going on instead of... And I think that's the road we're taking. Yeah. It, we're, 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 we're taking a relatively relatively light amount, but but in in, a, in line with the other line item expenditures, if you will. So it's not, it's not a it's not an annual big ticket item, with the idea that mm -hmm. that you know it would be half as much of a bond as you might have to right. take out when the time. Comes. Right. And, and apologies if you mentioned this already, but so, something that we saw last time was Diane looking at the all, the, the the lifespan of all of these all of these equipment and us essentially paying what that would be broken up by year. So that we're essentially paying the same thing every year. The, the five or 10 year, 10 year plan, five year plan that you guys are working on supposes that as well. It's just that as we're, as they're locking down that five year plan, we're at almost at the point where we need to start buying the, the big thing. So we have to sort of pass that, pass that first. And then once we do that, then we can look at budgeting that's going to be sustainable, and we probably, if we do it right, we probably won't have to have as like this big bite um, the next time around. Getting but, started is tough. But that, but the the other engine is going to have to be replaced in six years. Yeah, that's it's. You notice the numbers in 1989, 1993. Um, the the National Fire Protection Agency basically says frontline engines should be used for 20 years. We're past that. Yeah, we're, well, we're well past the typical uh, useful we've, life. We've been able, we we put off purchasing a brand new one by purchasing a used one six years ago? Five years ago? Six or seven. Yeah, something like that. And um, that one served us well, but it's still, it's 1989 is what we purchased. Um, so, uh, yeah, I we were talking about that Monday night. And um, my feeling is sooner rather than later, you know, in the two-year time frame, not the five-year time frame here. The problem is by, by funding a, 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 by having a capital fund that you can pay for this equipment with, you got to start funding the capital fund the day you buy the new truck. You're right. Well, that would be one way to do it. Of course. Right. I mean, it's the opposite of depreciation. Right? Right. You, you, you do it from the other end, and you're building up for when you need to replace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit, why is new better than used? Do a used just beat to death, or? They can be pretty beat. Uh, the, the cost of, I was just looking at some of the used ones today on the market, a 2005 or so used is about $100,000 compared to the 450 that's new. What are we going to get out of an engine that's already 10 to 15 years old? We're going to get another 5 to 10 years as compared to we can make a new one last 20, 25, 30 years. Mm -hmm. So, and the, the use, yeah, they, they can be really be, you know, we've been lucky in both of what we got. We got our tower used from Hanover and uh, they treated it very well. And we got the other one used, I think, from Hanover as well, and uh, the engine. And they, they treat their equipment well. So So when you say used, you're not talking two or three years old. You're talking <laughs> 10 or 15 years yes. old. Yes. Okay. yes. Really used. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they don't have five-year-old used engines on the market. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, yeah, who would sell it? Yeah. It's, it's not like a car. <laughs> one of those companies that just went out of business. Oh, in the Midwest. Right. But you would know if they were there, so. Hmm. I had a question when Joe was here. Um, and I can't remember when that was, but a little while ago. Um, we had talked about the audit mm -hmm. and that this is an audit year. And we had also talked about the maybe the town and the fire department could kind of share resources mm -hmm. and we would include it. We're getting ready to uh, release an RFP for audit services. And I think now's the time, should I include the fire department in that? We, we were talking about that the other day um, at, at the uh, board meeting for the fire department. And if, correct me if I'm wrong, we were, I believe it was pretty unanimous that that would be a good idea. That was a different thing. That was having um, 
Dana? Diane. Diane handle our no, books. That, no, there was that, but there was, yeah. we thought we, there was, there was also an audit. audit. We, we've sent out an RFP for the audit, and we've got one response at this time mm -hmm. out of three. Mm -hmm. Father Yosef Allen Valley was our one that, but the other one who hasn't given us a number back yet. Okay. Well, um, this would be, I think, probably for next, starting next year, if we do okay. that. And I know you you do them every other year on the odd years. Correct. Um, but I just <coughs> want to kind of revisit that and refresh my memory of where, where we were on that. Um, and the other thing I was going to ask you about is um, the idea that Diane could do your accounting for you. And I, again, I mean, you're not going to save an awful lot of money, but whatever you say. Well, one of the um, other thing is, is that goes back to the town. It doesn't go to somebody else. You know, you know so, the, so, so, um, so. we were, we talked about that Monday night, mm -hmm. and uh, we were all quite favorable to having Diane do the books instead of an outside source. The uh, question we had was, is it above the board enough? I mean, we thought, some of the people thought maybe we should talk to council and see what they think about that. Mm -hmm. um, and we do, one of the things that we were thinking is if she is doing the books, it, the audits would be included with the town at that time, so we wouldn't have to do an audit or reviews. So would that be the case? I don't think so. I think it would still be separate. But um, again, you bring a good point. That is something I would ask legal to well, and, advise me on. And, and if you recall, the, the reason that the fire department is doing the audit was because the select board asked them to. I, I mean, it's, it's best practices anyways, but if all of the books and all the finances are going to be sitting over here anyways, yeah, I mean, I guess it would be a separate audit to a certain extent in that it would be a separate account. Um, I guess I'm just thinking that really the town shouldn't absorb the additional costs for the fire department audit. However, okay. um, I think your economies of scale would make it Less. more attractive. Right. That's my opinion. Right. So, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have to have a separate audit. Um, for everyone. And an for audit everyone. is really, I mean, I. I cringe every time the audit bill comes in because it's just always a lot. However, you're assuring your citizens that you're doing things mm -hmm. correctly. Mm -hmm. But even though it would or could be a separate audit in that case, including it in the same RFP, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. would be. I think you'd see an economy of scale. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. You'd have yeah. a better pricing right. structure okay. than. There I are. think we should. I think we should talk about because you have to send one out, and and maybe soon. I'm premature asking you, but I happen to think that so. Uh, okay. But yes, we're going to need to send one. Yeah. I think we should talk about that because we really didn't get satisfactory responses to the to the RFP. Okay. As far as we were concerned, we were hoping for three responses. We got one with one saying they're going to give us a response at this time. Mm -hmm. So. Now, who did, was that? Was that Father Gill? Father Gill was the one who hasn't given us the response back. Because that's the, who we're using. Mm -hmm. yeah. but I think by having the accounting in house, it sort of a, it links them together. Because sometimes in the past we've needed information and needed information. And we're available anytime you want us to talk to us. It's all right in house. Mm -hmm. It would just go from her separately. Right, and rather than going to our outside company right. and. I think it would be more seamless that way too. And uh, yeah. I mean, it would be separate. You'd have to have some sort of separate, yeah. oh, you know, module. But, in the but the source mm -hmm. would be uh, yeah. mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah, it'd be like the water right. division, the sewer division, same, same fire issue, right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? But this handled differently, obviously, because you're a private entity. Right. Right. So let's keep talking and. Let me know. Yes, absolutely. <coughs> I'd like I'd like to help you. I'm not trying to point in. Ski in. <laughs> <laughs> do uh, do you know the deadline for getting the uh, the fire department numbers to Rosemary so that they can get on the ballot? Um, I don't. I, it's mid January, I believe. It's um, that it would have to be in the morning. Yeah, right. I can certainly get that date. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't anticipate you'd have 
I remember writing January 20th. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like that's the number. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should work here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She has to have it so many days in advance. So she mm -hmm. can, yeah. The, you said the communications went up nine percent, but you only went up seven percent on the budget. Yes, that was what we did. Is it was a little bit rounded on this current year's budget, and that changed the number from nine percent. We were able to do that. Yeah. yeah. What do you do with the? How does the carryover work? I should know, but. Um, in other words, are you saying here that you had 20000 left over from the operating budget last year? Is that what that's saying? That's the surplus. Yeah, we had a surplus of, uh, for the last couple of years combined that were able, 20000 were able to apply. We, on a standard, have um, put 10000 So we have a baseline in the account. Mm -hmm. we, we have a standard of 10000 that we carry over sure. from one year to sure. the next year to the next year. We call that fine balance. But. So the twenty thousand dollars that was left over in the budget uh, sound like a broken record. But I keep going back to your loan. Mm -hmm. If you could, if we could have some fund balance left over and pay that loan off, okay. Then take the thirty grand, start putting it in the capital budget. So you're actually putting fifty five thousand a year in. You'd look pretty good in three or four years towards the trunk. Is all it's on my mind. Without increasing your budget, so get rid of get rid of all that, that, that interest, right? Right. The debt, right, 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 and roll. But don't reduce your budget; just add it to the capital budget. Add it to the capital. Yeah. Correct. So deal with the debt before you start socking money away that's not earning any interest. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So I'm I'm just looking at that, saying, if you had, you know, a carry or a fund balance again this year, you probably could just about wipe that debt out. That's all. Mm -hmm. And then you could start socking away fifty grand a year. Good advice. Note it down for. Is this ready to go to Rosemary now, or do you anticipate any other changes? We don't anticipate any other changes. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll be in touch. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy, would you please? Are you going to be there Tuesday? Diane, that's just, just for you. Yeah. Why didn't you just... Um, the, I didn't hand it to you. Yeah. No, you're not supposed to see yeah. that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. You're just doing fine. Yeah. Thanks, Jeremy. Sure thing, Jeremy. Good night. Good night, all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. They spent, it wasn't me, I came in at the very last meeting, they spent a lot of time right, doing for, forecasting, like looking out five years. Right. It's not something that's, that they've done in the past. Right. And Joe isn't here, but it was Joe's vision to make sure that, that um, that's something that we're doing. And then Jerry um, actually taking, essentially taking that responsibility for doing that, that five-year plan. Mm -hmm. That was just like, Joe said, this is something we need to do. Jerry said, I'm on it. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, because if we just heard story after story and didn't get information and didn't get information. I, actually, I started to tell them how much nicer it was and thought better of it. <laughs> My first time, I remember they came in basically with no paper. Mm -hmm. They said, you know, we need 300,000. Dictionary wheel. <laughs> <laughs> what does audit mean? Does that begin with an A or an O? They did a very nice job. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, 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 okay, me. the administrative budgets? Yes, um, I guess I'll start with the income or the estimated revenues. And again, this is always something that my modem is always to kind of try to go low. And when it comes in more, I'm happy. Um, if I'm too high, then I'm not happy. Um, but we are projecting an additional $18,350 this year. Um, I guess maybe some of the 
Some of it's a pilot. Bigger changes is the pilot is more than what we had expected in previous years, so we did raise the um, pilot, and most of that is the pilot that is the increase. Um, I can go over these if you want to listen to me talk, or um, there's nothing other than that that I that we really have done it too exciting. And the pilot this past in FY uh, 19, the pilot is 193,000. It was received for pilot, which is really good. I'm always, I'm always, you know, always cringing because when you hear like the legislature meets and, and the governor's saying, oh no, you know, pilot's going to go down. But so far, you know, it's been good the last three years. And our revenues were last in, in, uh, at the end of 18. Do you remember what they were as far as increased over what we had projected? Um, well, this is 192,000 or something. Something like yep, that. Yeah, so. Yeah, in this year's 193. Yeah, so that was. And do that pilot was due to the hospital? No, uh, yes, part of this do the hospital, um, as far as the, psych the psychiatric hospital. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. yeah. that was the biggie. That's that what was the biggie, and it's always, you know, and of course um, the other buildings that they have here too. Hmm. And that varies with the state, and they have a formula of what they have, and so we know, yeah. really know. Right. Um, what we get. But the last few years have been pretty generous, I will say, you know, with the state. And they've been living up to the contract? Yes, the 25000 And yes. the contract for the state, the 25 they have it. Yeah, I do have a contact there, and what I do now is I build them in May mm -hmm. of each year, and the last two years has worked out well. And it, does the dispatch part of that agreement ever come into play? I mean, that, that I just sort of bypasses us, right? We don't, no, it doesn't... Um, they're still doing it for free, and so it's a good benefit for the town. Um, we don't really have a plus or minus. 20 years? 20. Yeah. 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 And I uh, looked up, I think it was Barry Town's dispatch for just police is about 87000 bucks. So well, I mean, look at what the fire department Yeah, see what the fire department's yeah. paying. So we really say. What, 9%? Yeah. Yeah, oh, right. that, was a, right. that was a shock. We got that number on Monday night. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's quite and an there's increase. Not, there's not, and there's not that much that you can do at the fire department level over here. You yeah. can complain about it, but. Yeah. So the dispatch is really very significant. Oh, yeah, yeah, to us. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we don't see it in our books. And we had it before for some other reason. That's a dispatch, a free dispatch. Who the police? Because we that was, I think that was through. Yeah, I can remember that. But ambulance, that's their problem, and fire outsources their own, so we really don't have, we never paid for it for quite a while. Well, we've been paying for the fire department. Right, for your budget. All. But no police, no ambulance. Yeah. Well, you pay for the ambulance one, too, because yeah. you pay the... But I mean, as, a, as a separate... A separate so, line item to us, no. Yeah, I wonder if that is, isn't that on the budget tonight to talk? That the ambulance contract, yes. yes, we need to talk. We we need to have a discussion on that. What's well, that's for later tonight. What's the, what's the surgeon zoning revenue? So I see twenty two thousand when we had twenty two five when we had seventy five hundred budgeted. And licenses and fees for page. Yeah, zoning. Are you talking zoning or? Zoning. Where's ten thousand now? You're talking. Uh, about no, well, no, no. I, I mean, I'm. I'm I, I see that the budget we just level funded it or level. Yeah. You're marked it there, but the actual for fiscal year 2018 is uh, th almost three times. Well, budget. and you know, and that's a that's a, a good thing, and that we got we received more than what we expected. Yeah, and talking, and you talking expenses? He's talking that we received 22,563 okay. rather than the right. you know, as compared to we only. Well, last year we only okay. anticipated 75. I think they might have, did they raise your fees a little bit? They raised, well, they, that was a couple of years ago, but I think we did not realize we were going to have the activity that we had. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we was are one reason a lot why. Of okay. And I think we're going to also be able to um, bring in more than 10,000 in FY19, but again, it's conservative. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and we had, I mean, we had several accounts that we brought in more than what we had budgeted for income, which is, I think, a good thing. 
rather than the other way around. The um, expense side of things, um, the administrative budgets have an increase of $47,000. Um, again, in these budgets are salaries, which were set at 2%. And I guess I'll point out some of the, the highlights. Other than the salaries and the fixed costs that we, again, the pension and the insurances, we still do not have the insurance figure from, from uh, Allegiant. From the health well, we insurance, won't, it won't until the fiscal year ends. In other words, we will not have that until July. Okay, I'm going to keep asking you that because I never remember yeah, that. Not, okay, there's yeah. not a calendar year. The DLCT is a calendar year. Okay, and the health is. So we're is we're we're again what we doing what we always do is just kind of do, have our best guesstimate. Um, we have decreased the telephone line. I'm happy to tell you in that. The phones that we have now are paid for, so all we have is the service to pay for. So that's saving us twenty-five hundred for the year. How much longer that contract? It's the contract um, ends December eighteenth, and it's just going to, we're going to be per month. I don't think we can do any better any other place. So, uh, so we own the phones now. Yes. Okay. That was the biggest cost um, to get a to go back. Several people have said to me, "Can we go back to?" landlines um, and that the cost to do that was just under fifteen thousand dollars there's a lot of voice over IP phone providers no. out there there's not mm -hmm. just this group which we did not really have a I would say a wonderful experience with at least on the well cost you know side. I think that's improved um, okay. the salesman I would agree is not is but I've kind of bypassed him and so <coughs> I think we've had some good response and getting the phone system so that it does what we want. Um, there is a department that would like the phone system to wash the floors, but it just doesn't. Um, Should we put that out to bid again? Or? You know, I don't think I'd recommend it because right now I don't think you're going to do any better financially wise and it's serving, it really I think works other than when the internet goes down, which is a pain in the neck. Um, or our server has a blip or something. I mean, obviously that's the problem, you know. But no, I don't think that's gonna. I just don't think we'd really benefit that much from it, Brad, to do it. I would certainly do it if the board told me to do it. But I, mean, I don't. Oh, yeah. um, Basically, a cancel license at this point. It's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's the it's software. Monthly fees. Yeah. Right. Just the monthly. You know, yeah, that's what All the little things that it does for us at each individual. Right. We jump through all the hoops, so why start? But there's, but there's a lot of companies that oh. provide that service. Yeah, yeah. there are. And it's getting cheaper every yeah. um, Let's see, meetings and elections, that has gone down because we only have one election Next in year. this budget. Um, we did put in for a computer, a new computer. Right. The, the, I'm just thumbing to make sure I don't. Oh, okay. Well, the the ambulance service is up ten thousand dollars. We're going to talk about that later, but we have budgeted using the figure for the next fiscal year. Um, the ambulance service, and I always have to think about this. We have they're basing it on two thousand eight hundred forty-seven citizens. Seven eighths of that is assigned to Barrytown, so twenty five, twenty six times thirty six dollars and fifteen cents. It's about ninety one thousand for Barrytown, and then Northfield is the remainder of the citizens. And Diane, remind me yeah, what it was. We, per we said, you know, we're making a guess at twenty eight dollars. Right. And that's maybe low, but we're hoping that that would be out. And I'm hoping to hear a more firm figure from Jeff mm -hmm. one of these days. So, right now we're budgeted. So that's up from ninety thousand six hundred to one hundred one thousand four twenty three, based on our figures. Um, we had put into the capital budget. The capital budget is actually down eighty five thousand, uh, but what we don't know is. 
what you want us to put in highway equipment and structures. We used 172,000 based on Diane's um, spreadsheet that she talked about a couple weeks ago, and that's but. Again, that's not a firm number. That's that's what we felt was a good number to put in there for now. We had the traffic lights last year of twenty five thousand. This year, we have ten thousand in there, and that is for uh, anticipation of having to replace the server. We've got fifteen thousand in there. Ten thousand that would be for the server, and then the other five thousand we said would be. Um, was it 15? Yeah, capital mm -hmm. budget is 15. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so 10,000 at the server, 5,000 was doing a building study that you were talking about. That's right. About. Um, I, and again, this is, this is thinking in the future. I don't think any of us are really qualified, or I'm not qualified, to really plan for the future for the building. The building is going to have to be addressed at some point. It's not going to happen next year or the year after, and I'm probably not going to see it. But I think it might behoove us to start thinking about, A, a committee to work on the building, and also maybe having some professional help to draft up some plans for the building. That does not have to happen this year. Um, there are, obviously, we're bursting at the seams, but it works, such as it is. Um, over years, it's been patches here, patches there, and I think it would be make more sense to have someone put it together that knows what they're doing. So, like, uh, basically, well, have somebody do a feasibility study with some sketches and some square footage um, planning mm -hmm. as to what you really need for a building. I, I agree. That's what I'm thinking. And I'm not even sure if it's going to be this building. I mean, I'm no, just, I understand. You know, yeah. How is the mall coming in with their planning on that? The mall, uh, the town center designation is really ramped up now that our plan is approved. And zoning is going to the voters in March, our zoning plan, and to be, we're assuming it's going to be approved. Um, I'm also going to be talking about that in a little bit, too. So there's a lot of plans going on in the mall. And as far as, as you, as you know, the gentleman came in a couple weeks ago and talked about the assisted living facility that's going there. There are a few other things, I think, on their plate. Um, I think they're really actively working on the town center designation. It's looking with things in place. Everything's getting more and more in place. We've been meeting every two weeks with my Rushman, Tom and I, and I think it's, it's been a lot longer than we thought it was going to be, I think, at start, but I think we're moving forward. And again, that is one idea of, you know, having town offices over at that, the mall, having them... Um, the only issue is the vault. Well... I mean, again, and that's why we'd have the feasibility study. The, the vault, the vault to try to move that vault. I mean, obviously, you need to be able to get into the vault. I mean, it's yeah, it, the clerk would have to have somewhere to store records that was met all the, all the requirements. Well, I think what you'd be asking for for an RFP is a space plan. Okay, thank you. And what they do is they figure number of people, number of offices, number of restrooms, and they come up with the total square footage, then they'll do a few sketches for you showing you different right. processes. <clears throat> um, how much money is in the equipment fund now? In the equipment fund right now? Okay, we have, um, you're talking like from last year, just a second. Yeah, I see. That was the one we budgeted for last year, the first year we budgeted. Yeah, I, had, I gave you something earlier to get in the so we, 157.712 is actual for 2018, so is that what we carried in there? Let me, let me look at that figure so I can refresh my memory here. Um, that is what we actually have spent. Yeah, that's what we spent on oh, the truck, okay. on yeah. that new truck. Yeah, and that was in the, so the 18 budget. So you're looking budget. more at the 233.196? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and out of that 233,196, right now we have 138.7 left. 
but that is for um, well know, we have fo we have um, front of the money for the culvert right. and so that's where that came from and we will be getting I anticipate that our total cost for the Mirror Lake Road culvert is in the thirty five thousand dollar range um, which I guess means that we have and I'm and we have to talk about the excavator at some point, but it should mean that we have something like 190,000 left. I would there. say that at the yeah. yeah. anticipation. Just, but right now, for the Mirror Lake culvert, we have 144,583 that we've spent. We know we're going to spend more. Right. And even just despite the fact that we have a, um, a grant on this one, we have Richardson Road to contend with. That's we're the, not going to get a grant. Yeah. So if we've already spent you know, this much on Mirror Lake, what are we going to spend on Richardson Road? Well, you're going to get 90% of that back from the grant. But we, how much is the Mirror Lake project going to be in all, do you think? Um, we have we have not gotten the... Yeah. I should know that because we did bid the thing and I can't remember what okay. the figure but is. But just Richardson Road is going to be more, right? Um, I'm how not much? sure of that. Okay. We haven't gotten the engineering finished on that. So I guess that's my point, is I don't know how much of this 233 we should be spent holding for Richardson Road or... You know, obviously, we'll be spending 30000 on this. We have a few things going with that line. Um, mm -hmm. Richardson Road... And then what we're going to do about the excavator problem? That's what that's yeah. what's going on in the back of my head. Yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. So when we're talking about how much we should fund next we year, we may have to not do Richardson Road in in nineteen if we have to, depending what we do with the excavator. Is that a risk of collapse or failing? Because that's a much bigger problem if that one fails than Mirror well, Road. Yes, because you always can hire, if you need an excavator, you always can hire one. Right. Or have someone come and do a move a culvert or something mm -hmm. like that. Is it in uh, ready to collapse? No. However, it needs attention. And the longer we wait, the, of course, the worse it is. And we had talked earlier about slip lining. I was told the other day that they would not allow us to slip line. Um, and I will have John... Grenier coming to talk to you about that when he is ready to do that. I, d I guess it, it's... I'm not thinking it's going to be, and maybe I'm a little too optimistic, but I don't think it's going to be at the same level that Mirror Lake Road was. Well, it's not, as, wise. It's not as big. Is it? I'm trying to think. There's it's a big Richard culvert. Road, but, yeah. Two culverts or just one? Just one. one it's one big one. Yeah. yeah, and I can't tell you how big, but it's pretty big. And I was there with the hydrologist last fall, and, and he thought that we didn't need one quite that big. Again, that's, I would look at the engineer. To, so just, it, it's not the cost of the culvert, it's the putting it in that's expensive. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And if, if there's a... You know, eight footer in there now. Probably better off just keep it eight because it costs less to. You're probably right. Put yeah. the air in than it does put gravel in to maintain it. So we have that cost that we don't know what it is, and hopefully, maybe we'll have a little better idea before we finalize the budget. Um, the excavator was total. Uh, we're going to get thirty-seven thousand dollars from the insurance. Um, you, we had talked a little bit about putting an RFP. We think maybe a used machine would be the way to go, perhaps. Um, Diane found the invoice from the, excava the current excavator that we purchased in 2010. 2010. That was uh, purchase price of 75 9 It had 403 hours on it when we bought it. How many hours on it now? I asked that too. You did, and I don't, I can't. 4,000. I think so. 4,000 4, hours. Something so 30, like that. that's 360 hours a year. Yeah. And I think that um, you had mentioned in the RFP to, that you were thinking of maybe having an excavator with 250 hours. Is that a good well, figure? Or is the that reason sensitive? that 250 came up is the, the one that Tim wanted. Had two hundred fifty hours. Oh, okay. That's, that's, oh, that's where, where that came from. That's where the okay. two fifty. Okay, that's why I have it in my head. Yeah. Um, which is two hundred fifty hours. A lot of hours. Yeah. I don't think so. Is it? Yeah. Um, I mean, four thousand is not that many. Not really. No. I mean, I'm trying to think. I think one grader when they traded it in or, or sold it had fourteen thousand hours on it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um. 
So um, the answer, I mean, Tim had, the salesman had this great deal that we could lease purchase and, and so forth, but again, we're trying to kind of stay away from doing things like that mm -hmm. for committing ourselves to five years. Oh, it would be nice if we could find a used excavator with a thousand hours on it and buy it for eighty thousand dollars and take the thirty five thousand dollars worth of insurance money and pay the rest out of the capital budget. That's all that I was thinking. Yeah. I was trying to see if there was enough money there for that plus the risk of smoke yeah. Maybe not quite, but <coughs> maybe we can we do have an equipment fund. I don't know what that has in it, the reserve fund I'm thinking of. It doesn't have that much in it, does it? You're I, talking about the highway? Yeah. I don't have that right here. Oh, no, I know. I, I didn't think to ask you. Sorry. Yeah. But still, we're talking maybe 20000 there. I mean, but it's, it's, we could spend it, obviously. Right. Right. I'm just saying what would help towards, so maybe it might be close, but maybe we could do something. I guess where I was going with all that is should we change this? The government funded $200,000, so we got enough money to do an excavator or something. That's where I was going with that. Yeah. So instead of the 172, bring that to 200, which, yeah. Well, it brings it back to the 2018 level. Well, did you want to change the um, RP to the rate and put it up to five more hours? No, that's what I'm saying. I think that we could we could get an RFP for a size machine with up to a thousand hours on it. Well, again, the, I mean, the question was the warranty, too. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think once you get over 500 hours, you're probably not going to find any warranties, but 250 is, hell, that's just a demo unit. Exactly. And I so think that's what that John Deere was, was a demo unit. So we could say less than 500? You know, 500 or less. Or yeah. And uh, see what we get. But it, if we if we increase that line item to $200,000, we should have enough money after we get reimbursed for Mirror Lake for an excavator and a culvert, is all I'm thinking, without having to bond the culvert. Would you like us to move, change that to 200? I'm, I'm asking everybody's opinion. I think it's, I think it's a good idea. A good idea. Can you Person, put up your RFP for the excavator, even if it's 500 hours, you can take it and say it has to have a certain warranty with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they'll just add that into a cost per machine. Right. It doesn't seem like we spent all that much for as far as repairs for the excavator, if I'm correct, before this time period. No. We never got no, we really, no. We, no, I mean. That really doesn't have any hours. So. Well, Donald's got a 390 caterpillar that they were sending up to Coventry. I saw that the other day. It's got a seven year <laughs> I mean, I mean, the other thing is, that I, think we have, I think we have money to hire people. They have to tear it apart a If we have to. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, I don't think we need that. <laughs> It'd be hard to put a culprit into that. <laughs> I, I think we'd have to raise that line up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess that's the administrative side of it. you have any other questions <laughs> that we can answer or any other suggestions? Um, there is one new computer in there. It's for me. That would be, otherwise, now all the other computers have been replaced you know, this side of the building anyways for the last two years. They might be next to the oldest after that. Right. That old. Yeah, mine's the oldest. That was the oldest? oldest? Yours is the Mine oldest. Mine is the oldest. Probably about five years old. Five years. Five yeah. or six. Yeah. Probably six. Yeah, I've been here four, so. Yeah. yeah. The uh, zoning telephone item went up by quite a lot. So it's six miles well, by a lot percentage wise, six fifty to twelve hundred. That is Tom's phone because I think we're putting more of his cell phone on that. Yes. Yeah, we're we're putting Tom's cell phone in that. Yeah. Right now, we're I guess our cell our cell phone he's using we're putting against highway. And, yeah. Well, we did different. start doing different. I'm just I'm trying to refresh my memory, Jeremy. Bear with me while I look no, and no see worries. what I'm talking about here. Um, I'm not sure why that's 1,200. I'm going to look into that. Um, that seems well, high. To me. Maybe not. I don't think so. But I'll 100. Yeah, probably not. 100 a month. Okay. All yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. When you put right. it. In. It yeah. looks big as, as you look at it, but if you put it over the yeah, yeah. The you're right, you're so right. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, is, uh, and is that on the same plan as any other town cell phones? 
Or you know, we really should bring them on the same plan. I don't know if it would save us money, well, but it would be easier for Verizon. us because right now it's AT&T. Okay. The AT&T plan we have is for municipalities, just to make you aware. Okay. Because, because when we have to replace the phone, we can't just go to AT&T. We have to go through <coughs> the service and we have to call them because we get special, we do get a special price. Bless you. Uh, but the reason that we're with AT and T is that Tim says he doesn't. It have was service it was list. Tim because his phone is also he doesn't have yeah. he can't get service on yeah. Verizon at his house, yeah. um, which is why. Because yeah, Tom doesn't care one way or the other. No. And the police department has Verizon. Verizon with the state. The state recommends that right. I think to yeah. them. Yeah. I'm just thinking. I mean, I have three lines for less than a hundred. I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a different wow. sort of a different sort of account. Yeah. Well, they have actually three lines. There's two for highway and one for Tom. Mm -hmm. But oops, but altogether, it, it should be less than. I mean, that's my, that's my instinct, anyways. Well, I so think it's because so of the data. That well, we then there's the then the data. the data. How much how much of the data do they use? Oh, I mean. I guess, I guess I could look in the bills, right? I could certainly get it for you, Jeremy, but I don't dare quote it. That's, this is, that's okay, well, is there an AT&T bill in there? Not in there. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Let me, I will email it to you, Jeremy, okay? Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you're talking about that, you're just talking about files and stuff, not just talking. No, not talking, not texting, just anytime they download yeah, the it, and, you know, check the news or look at the whatever. internet on their yeah. phones. Yes, right, that's what I was just thinking. No, that, that was that was what I wanted to look yeah. at. I, mean, yeah, I, I, think that's... I, I don't remember seeing that on any of the bills that it was too terribly high, but... but I think that we're paying for a level that maybe we don't, we're not using, which is right. I understand. I was thinking it was $45. Just for that alone. Oh. Yeah. For that alone yeah. They don't all three have it, but... Tim mm -hmm. has Tim, it. Uh, the main phone, it's kind of a plan that the main phone pays more and then the others are less. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it for the budget meeting? Yeah. I'll have a motion to close that out. Yeah. We're adjourn the budget meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Wrigley scheduled select board meeting for the town of Berlin to order uh, for Thursday, December the 6th. Uh, to my far left is uh, Pete Kelly, to my left is Lane Lamberton, to my right is Jeremy Hansen, Angelina Capron, and with us also is Dana Hadley, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, our town treasurer. I'm Brad Town, and we will start with uh, additions or changes to the agenda, Dana. Yes, I'd like to add a discussion for the Recreation Department snowblower. Okay. And public comment. Hearing none. Uh, treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the audit is wrapping up, finally. And it's supposed to be done by December 1st, but it's not quite done yet. I, you know, I'm anticipating within the next week or so, because after that we do want to have the auditor come in and do the presentation. I haven't heard anything good, bad, or indifferent. I'm sure there will be a few entries to make, but beyond that I haven't really heard anything. We're not aware of any issues or. No. Okay. And so we'll say bills. Uh, so we'll move to the ordinance of um, abuse of town roads for snowmobiles and ATVs. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. I'm going to give you the one you gave me. You, Chi Chi. In, on the uh, ordinance uh, for the town, uh, use the town roads? I think that um, you've had a few public hearings. You've had several people that have given you um, their input on different issues. 
Uh, I have not written the ordinance because I'm waiting for the board to either approve it or not approve it. And as far as use of the road. And as far as use of the roads. And, and so I guess that's where I am, just waiting if the board is going to say yes or no, or, and then what further stipulations would be in the ordinance. Again, we'd have to... If, <laughs> what about this all? <laughs> well, I, how would you like to do it? No, I mean, what you've said is, is right, but it, it, I think we should have attacked it a little bit differently. Probably. Um, so I guess what it comes down to is um, how does the board feel about allowing use on certain roads in the town so that the ATVers and the, and the snowmobilers can take and get their... Uh, Get their see if they can get their trail system set up. So I guess what it comes down to is, do we want to do this or not, or do we want to take and uh, limit the use, or just have a idea of just what roads were allowed them to use? So, when you say that, it means that we bypass the ordinance, but we would give. Well, what we should have done was we should have had the we should have had put the ordinance in first, and then tip and did the roads. What we're doing is is the ATV and the the clubs wanted to know if we would allow it, and we weren't sure one way or the other, so we started kind of on the back side of it. So why don't we start it the right way and get the well get an I mean, ordinance that lets us then. Fill the ordinance. Well, yeah. I think what I think what the ATVers are looking for is, or the snowmobilers, the, the clubs are, is will we allow the use of certain roads in the town of Berlin? If we do, then they can go and get their trail system put in. If we don't, then they're they're basically out of luck. So what we're doing, I think what we're trying to do here is just to allow the to have a vote to allow the to tell us tell the clubs yes we will allow use or no, we will not. And that is where we're kind of at right now. But can I get just another little input sure. on that? Um, when this all came about, it was mainly just to get the snowmobile trail back open, and then we kind of got attacked by the ATV clubs, and they wanted to join in and, and have like a dual trail going through. Yeah. And I was like, I was kind of skeptical with that at first because I knew we were going to run into some roadblocks with it. But really mainly just trying to get the snowmobile trail through there. Okay. I understand that the uh, ATVs is a whole different issue. That's a whole different issue, and Vast doesn't really want to have a lot to do with the, with the uh, ATV club. Um, the, with the snowmobile club, it would only really be open, that, that, that you can only ride the snowmobile trails from December 15th to April 15th, and that's weather permitting. Sometimes you're not on the snowmobile trails until late January, and then you're done in March. Yeah. So it's really only like a couple month time period. Well, uh, it's like everything is weather dependent. It's all weather dependent. And, the, and I understand the skepticism on the ATVs. It, I really do. It's a whole different situation right there. That's more like year round in the spring when it's muddy out. Snowmobiles, it's only when there's snow on the ground. So the, the other thing in question about if we were, well, we're not going to do it that way, I guess. But if we were to vote on an ordinance first, that would be another 60 days and another. Mm -hmm. So we want to, would we revisit that later? Well, if we take it, if we we'd still would, we'd, we'd still have to take and go through the ordinance process. So basically, I think tonight is just to take and let the snowmobile clubs know, you know, one way or the other, if they can use the roads. Specific roads? Specific roads. Mm -hmm. And just areas, and just sections of the roads, so not like opening up the whole right. Brookfield Road. And right, what we've, what we've talked, talked about there. Yeah. So, I guess the motion I'll be looking for is, are we going to allow use of some of the roads, or are we going to not allow use of some of the roads? So, I guess <clears throat> one thing that, that I'd be interested in hearing how everybody feels about is, there is a, there's a section of road here that without it, they can't build a trail anywhere. And that is from the culvert to in the shed road. Yeah, at the end of shed road to under the interstate to Berlin Pond Road. Yeah. And if we're not going to give them the ability to use that piece of road, they can't have any trails because they can't cross the interstate any other way. So, I mean, I'm in support of allowing that, but I think 
you know, they've got some work to do to figure out the rest of their trails. Yes. But I mean, if they knew that they could use that thousand feet approximately of road, then they could go out and get to work and see if they could get permission from landowners to build the trail. Yep. So we would, we would give them permission to do stuff to being able to obtain permission from the whomever. And that would only have to be the snowmobile clubs. It only have to be during snowmobile season. Right. You could yeah. say, listen, we don't really want ATVs on our roads. Right. Snowmobiles will be okay from December 15th to April 15th mm -hmm. on these sections. Yeah. Well, I, I, but I would like to be able to ride my ATV over to Mark's house and stuff, you know. Yeah. But I don't think. You know, that's up to the police on what if they're going to enforce anything like that. You know. Well, I I agree with Wayne. We should give them, but we shouldn't squelch the possibility of them finding trails on private property. Yep. If we allow them, the thousand feet or whatever so it is, cross town road on the the west side at uh, the intersection of Painter Pike South, over to. The culvert, the, the middle of the culvert. culvert. It's approximately across, directly across from Shed Road. From the dry hydrant is. That's where they get on the road. From, so, so we'll say from the dry hydrant <coughs> to the intersection with Patriot Bike South. That, I mean, we've got we've to go through the ordinance process to do that. That's going to be too late for the snowmobile season. It's too late at this point, right. anyways. We we know it was. But, going to take but by us. passing this ordinance, it'll give you guys a year to try to, to go and knock doors, knock, knock on, on doors, doors and try stuff. to get a trip. Right. Basically, that's the way I look at it. I think that that's without that piece, they can't do anything. Do anything. The other thing I wanted to question, actually, for the snowmobile folks, is that if they do get permission from other people, is this require a renewal every year? Um, it, 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 they do the forms that VAST have. They have uh, yearly ones, and they have um, until people, like, like the town can sign one, uh, until you don't want us to use it anymore. This is on a, it's usually a yearly basis, but we try to get permission forms until they say no. Uh -huh. you know, so it would stay open until they want you to leave. Just. So that way you don't have to go knock on the doors every year of, you know, could be 50 property owners, you know. Yeah. I'm just thinking. The ordinance is however you want to word it. Right. Yeah. <coughs> well, I, would, I, would take, I would think probably a, for the town at least, uh, that section of the road should be yearly. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a motion to go forward with the ordinance allowing for use by snowmobiles of town roads. Specifically, I, I guess, I don't know that this is correct, but specifically, uh, approximately a thousand feet of road on, on Crosstown Road from the dry hydrant to Turnpike Turn Pike South uh, for snowmobile use only. Um, so I guess we'd need to go and do an ordinance before we could actually approve that section. Right? Yeah, but you're basically you're saying you want to take and let them know that we're willing to do that. So it's a, it's a signal. It's and a, with a yearly renewal. Annual renewal. Yeah. Okay. I'll so prepare that, would, that for your next meeting, but I'll send it to you before because I want to make sure it's worded correctly. That would be more clearly defined in the ordinance. So there's, there, the, we, we can also look back at what we had before. I think there's also model ordinances. Oh, I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried about making sure I got the dry hydrant and the oh, west side of the road, and you know. <laughs> you know, you can look at other towns, what other because Bass is in every town in the state, in the state right. of Vermont. Yeah. You can look what agreements they have with other towns yeah. as well. But mm -hmm. defining what we're talking. I mean, I can do all the. Or I can even get stuff. some of that information for you, Dana, if, if you need. Thank you, Josh. You don't need to. I, I okay. can do it. Yeah. So you probably have enough to do. Here a second. <laughs> a second. Okay, so now we can still continue the discussion. Is there any other discussion on it? I don't think that this ruffles anybody's feathers. I think you're right. I think that if there's going to be any connectivity between trails, it has to happen here. Um, I still personally don't think that Brookfield Road and Black Road are, are good options for a number of reasons, but this doesn't consider that. Them. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries.
Mm -hmm. No, you just got to write the coordinates date in. Beautiful. Do this all again. <laughs> Um, Jimmy, did you say no, I guess you, yeah. you did because I see a thing in the uh, front porch for him. You had a piano or something? Thank you. I, I had a piano. It was left of the place because they're trying to get rid of the piano or something. <clears throat> okay. okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should have the one with that. That was, yeah, it was one of the conditions of sale. Yeah. Um, okay, renewal of the ambulance okay. contract, Dana? Um, the ambulance contract. Um, expires June thirtieth of two thousand nineteen, and in the contract, um, we were given an option to extend the contract for an additional two years, and we need to notify Barrytown if we're going to do that before January first. What's the step in the increase? That's right. Here. Um, we're going from thirty. Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong line. Thirty-three seventy-nine per capita, and that's considering twenty-five hundred people, twenty-five twenty-six to thirty-six fifteen per capita for FY twenty, and the following year FY twenty-one goes to thirty-eight sixty-eight. So this year it's going up a little over two dollars and fifty cents, and the same for the following year. So it's about. Six thousand dollars a year, an increase. Yes, over the next two yeah. years. Yeah. And this decision is for two years. It isn't. Yeah. You, there's no, there's no option for just doing one year. No. Well, I will say that they have given us very good service. We yeah, yeah. last time we put this out to bid, um, Barrytown was the only bidder. I move that we uh, enter into a contract extension with Barrytown Ambulance. Second. Any further discussion? So, as long as we're extending the contract that was here, we're not we're not required to follow the RFP process. No, no, because you had we had agreed to the two years. Which we had uh, taken well, care of that in the last agreed to contract. Think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed. Motion carries. I will let Barrytown know. Oh. <laughs> you have three sets of minutes to. Yeah, I'm trying to find the first one. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it here. Did, did you. Uh, yeah, mine ends. Mine ends too. Right after the uh, Barrytown ambulance agreement. Um, I sent you. Packet. I sent you two packets this time, oh. and oh. because I added the Barrytown ambulance, so probably should have just redone the whole thing. Okay. Um, Seemed Monday, like a good idea at the time. I got. Yeah, it's only Monday, a couple of days. Monday, early. October. 15th. Oh, earlier. 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 Yeah. All right. I just looked at yeah. the town administrator. On the October 15th one, in the long, long narrative with the public hearing, um, just a, a, a name spelling correction down in the fourth from the bottom line. It says Jerry Diamantides. Mm -hmm. It's a, the J. Thank you. Rather than a G. I'm impressed. I can't even say his name. I don't spell it. Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a motion on those. Move to approve the minutes for the October 15, 2018 select board meeting with the previously no change. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, we're doing a lot of housekeeping tonight, David. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the Thursday, November 1st uh, minutes. Uh, another name correction under public hearing. Third line down, it says Shea Miller. Shea is spelled S-H-E-A. Thank you. I missed that meeting, didn't I? I thought you did, so let me, do, let me check into it and I will I believe correct the, the attendance. 
good state anyway. Yeah. So. I think it's okay. Um, any other changes to that? All those and uh, a motion to pass. Move to approve the November 1st, 2018 select board minutes uh, with the previously noted change. Second. Any other discussion on those? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And the minutes for Thursday, November 29th. Um, The time is wrong on that one. I'll fix that. What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, seven. Yeah. Uh, motion on those? So moved. <clears throat> Here a second. Second. Uh, still reading. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, let's see. Um, any other discussion on those? Hearing none. Um, okay, um, hearing uh, no other discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And. Approval of licenses, permits, and vouchers. Move to approve general fund accounts payable warrant number 19G11 with checks 18662 through 18711 in the amount of $224,130.98. Also, Northfield Savings Payment NSN 19-16 in the amount of $5,970.53. Also, payroll warrant number 19-11 for payroll from November 11th, 2018 through November 24th, 2018 in the amount of $49,588.05. Second. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, town administrator report, Dana? Sure. Um, I think I told you what I know about the downtown designation. Uh, speaking about the zoning approvals, the select board is going to need to hold a public hearing on the zoning um, updates, and we have tentatively chosen January 10th to do that, which is not your regular meeting night. Um, the planning board needs to have two, you need to have one. And so that's Thursday the 10th. Washington County has a pre-budget meeting on July um, for the fiscal 20 um, budget, which will be next Thursday at 10 o'clock at the county clerk's office. I mentioned the Christmas party, holiday <laughs> party. Um, we have, we're going to be working with the state, uh, Vermont towns, all their parcels are being mapped by, through a state, uh, actually it's highway money through the state, and it's taken over three years. Berlin is on the third year of the project, so that will be happening in 2019. Um, I think it's going to save us some money in our mapping um, department, and that is an expensive thing to keep our maps up to date. So that will be happening. Um, town center, I spoke to you about. We still, we're still, I'm still waiting for some more information on the police department doors, and we are going to be putting out an RFP for the hazard mitigation plan. We do have funding for that. Um, Next week, I'll be going for training for emergency management for administrators, as well as Diane, Rosemary, and Corinne. Um, we had spoken some time ago about rewriting the animal control ordinance, and basically it was because of the, the fines in there of how we can 
have them as revenue. So I will be doing that as well. Okay. Um, so that's really all I have tonight. And your addition? Uh, my addition is um, the snowblower that the Recreation Department uses to clear the snow from the rink mm -hmm. is dying a noble death and needs to be replaced. Um, Tom Willard went out and got three quotes on a snow snow blower. Um, the money would come out of the recreation fund. Um, we have three, one from Tucker Machines for nineteen ninety nine ninety nine, and these what are make? all. What's that? What make are they? This one is a Toro Power Max. Okay. So I can look at that. You probably understand that better than I do. Um, John Deere has given him one for Honda HS. And, and Tom tells me these are all comparable machines. Um, $3,029. And Sears, a, <laughs> um, a Sears machine for $17,99.99. Um, I asked him to get three quotes as per our policy for purchases between $1,000 and $5,000. This is the one I used to have. Yeah. The home is really nice, a lot of power and everything, but they are so expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brutal. They're beautiful. I have the one that the Sears, yeah. I would, yeah. I, I'm just, I'm just going to say that I, I would move to approve the machine from Doctors only because they can fix it. I think Tom also said that to me, that he, you know, yeah. I mean, take care of it. There's probably nothing wrong with the Sears machine, but who are you going to call? Right. So does that stay just here, or does just it here? Yeah. On the they store it. They store it out in the shed. Okay. So it should yeah. last quite a while. 1999. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll make a motion that we buy the snowblower from the funds from the recreation fund from Tucker Machine for 1999.99. Second. Any further discussion? Hey, I'm not gonna run it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm it's I'm just a ring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got one hook in my John Deere, so I'm gonna right. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. And we need to convene the liquor control board. Move to recess the select board and convene the liquor control board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have. Uh, Application for a catering permit for Cornerstone Pub and Kitchen. We've approved them many times. We know them. Uh, it's for a party to be held at the Northfield Savings Bank on December 13th. Move we'll to approve the uh, catering license for Cornerstone. Second. Um, what's this for anyway? It's the Northfield Bank's Christmas party. Christmas party at Northfield Savings Bank. I got invited, so that's why I want. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably recuse yourself. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And change the approximate number of person people expected to 99. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Reconvene the select board. I need to reconvene the select board to. Adjourn the Liquor Control Board and reconvene the Select Board. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, round table, Pete. I'm set. Wayne? I'm set. Jeremy? In. Okay. I'm good. Um, executive session? No, thank you. Move to, Ooh. Move to adjourn. Sorry. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's the record.